Hi, today we are learning limits, and the first topic is limits of numerical sequence. A numerical sequence is an index string of numbers, for example, a1, a2, a n, etc. The index below shows the number of that variable. Also, a numerical sequence can be characterized as a function of a natural argument. We used to write the argument of the function in brackets, but this argument should be written below, in the numerical sequence. For example, the sequence a n, which is defined by the formula, let's say 3 n divided by 5 n minus 1. For example, if we want to calculate a 1, then we put 1 instead of n. So it will be 3 multiplied by 1, we get 3. Then it will be 5 multiplied by 1 minus 1, and we get 4. I want to calculate a 5, so I need to substitute 5 instead of n. It will be 15 on the top, 24 on the bottom. Then we reduce fraction, and so on. The sequence usually is given as some formula, as in this case. But sometimes the sequence is given by the so-called recurrence relation. The recurrence relation means that the nth element of the sequence is expressed in terms of any of its previous elements. For example, we will take a look at the arithmetic progression. Each element of the sequence is equal to the previous one, plus some number. This number is called the difference of the progression. That is, we see that the nth element of the sequence is given through the previous one. Such a relation is called recurrence, but we will work mainly with setting the sequence in the form of a ready-made formula. I will show you an example. So let's say we have a sequence in the form of a n plus 1 divided by n. Let's see how elements behave. We need to draw a graph of this sequence. We will plot the number n on the x-axis, and there will be the value itself on the y-axis. If n is equal to 1, then we have here 1 plus 1 divided by 1. The result will be 2. If n is equal to 2, then this will be equal to 3 divided by 2, or 1 and a half. That is approximately somewhere here. If n is equal to 3, then it will be 4 divided by 3, or 1 and one third that is slightly lower than the previous point on the graph, and so on. If, for example, n equals, let's say, 100, then a n will equal 100 and 1 divided by 100, or 1 and 1 hundredth. Approximately this value, and so on. Pay attention that the elements of the sequence gradually reach the value 1, but never up to it. That is, the higher the variable of sequence, then the closer these points will be to the number 1. Then we can say that the limit of the sequence is 1. We should write it as follows. The limit with n goes to infinity from a n to 1. This is our intuitive understanding of the limit. Let's take a closer look at the limit. Please note that if I take a small corridor around this unit, I mean if I put a little space above and below one and draw lines like this, then I get a little corridor. It is also called epsilon, if this shift is equal to a certain number of epsilon. And note that all elements of the sequence, starting with some number, fall into the epsilon. And as you can see, I can make this corridor even less. That is, if I reduce the epsilon, then all the elements of the sequence don't leave this corridor, starting from some number. We can take the definition of a limit as a basis for this. So, the limit of the a n sequence is the number a, with any chosen epsilon. That is, with any positive epsilon number. In mathematics, this sign means for any epsilon greater than zero. For any epsilon of zero from some number. That is, there is some number n, or we can find it, which, generally speaking, depends on the epsilon. All elements of the sequence will be inside this corridor, starting from this number. 
We can describe the fact that the elements of the sequence are in this corridor as the module of the difference between the elements of the sequence and this limit. And we should indicate that this module of difference is less than epsilon. Indeed, if we write this module, we will just get this corridor and it turns out that AN is inside this corridor. So, all elements of the sequence satisfy this relation starting with this number. That is, for all n that are greater than epsilon. This is the definition of a limit. It is rather bulky, but is one of the key ones in mathematics. Let's take a look at this definition for our limit. We already roughly understand that 1 should act as a limit. Let's check if this is true. That is, we need to check that there is some number for any positive epsilon starting from which this relation works. Therefore, let's write this ratio to find this number, a n minus a. a n is such a sequence in our case. n plus 1 divided by n minus a, that is, minus the limit. We think that the limit is 1, so minus 1. Let's simplify it and find a common denominator. If you find a common denominator, then there will be module 1 divided by n. There will be n plus 1 minus n on the top and n on the bottom. But n is a natural number, which means that this is a module, which means it is positive and its module is equal to itself. So 1 divided by n is less than an arbitrary positive number of epsilon. Now we can say that n is greater than 1 divided by epsilon. That is, as soon as n becomes greater than 1 divided by epsilon, we can see that we have this relationship. Then we can take this variable as the number of n epsilon. However, it is worth noting that n is a natural number, but 1 divided by epsilon can be anything. Therefore, we will take the numbers integer part in order to make it natural. And we should add 1 to make sure our inequality works. So, if the number n exceeds this value, and this value, in turn, even more exceeds this value, then this inequality works. And it means that this number 1 is really the limit. And now we can conclude that the limit of our sequence is 1. Let's check one more example. So, for example, we have a sequence a n with the formula 2 n divided by 3 n plus 1. And let's prove that the limit of the sequence is 2 thirds. We should take the module of a n minus a by definition. That is module 2 n divided by 3 n plus 1 minus 2 thirds. Let's simplify it and find a common denominator. The common denominator is 3n plus 1 multiplied by 3. An additional multiplier 3 will be applied here, so it will be 6n. The minus will be here, so 2n plus 1. And a module is applied here. Minus 6n cancel each other out. Minus 2 with module is just 2. We have a positive number on the bottom which means that we will leave 3n plus 1 multiplied by 3. And as we said before, this difference must be less than some random number of epsilon. We choose an epsilon, it will be a random number. So 3n plus 1 will be greater than... The first thing we will do is transfer the 3. There will be 3 epsilon divided by 2, and then we turn it over. That is, 2 divided by 3 epsilon. Now we can say that the number n will be greater than 2 divided by 3 epsilon minus 1 and divided by 3. And let's just multiply everything by one third. Let's not simplify and leave it as it is. This means that if our number n is greater than this value for the selected epsilon, then this inequality will work for us. That is, we have this inequality starting from some number. This means that two-thirds is the limit. It remains for us to choose the number n epsilon, large letter n epsilon. 
As in the previous case, we can take the integer parts of this value and add 1. Now, if the number n is greater than the chosen n epsilon, and this n epsilon is obviously greater than this value, then this inequality will work. That is, we were able to indicate the number from which such an inequality is satisfied for any variable of epsilon. And this, by definition of the limit, means that the number two-thirds is the limit of this sequence. As we saw in previous examples, we knew the value of the limit and proved that it is really a limit. But in most cases, we don't know the value of the limit. What should we do in such cases? We can use some relations in order to solve such tasks. First, the limit of a sequence of the form 1 divided by n equals 0. The proof process is very simple, as in the previous cases. We consider the difference and point out the 0 is the limit of the sequence. We can calculate more complex examples according to this relation. For example, we will try to calculate the limit of such a sequence. Let's say 5n minus 8 here and 3n plus 4 here. To calculate this limit, we proceed as follows. We will divide both the numerator and denominator of this inequality by n. And let's see what we get. We write the limit again. n goes to infinity. We get 5n divided by n on the top, which is just 5. Minus a divided by n. So we write a divided by n. 3n divided by n is 3 plus 4 divided by n, and we got this ratio. Now pay attention to this. Here is the limit when n tends to infinity from this inequality. It is similar to this example. We have 1 here and 8 here. 1 doesn't play a role. 8 divided by n with n tending to infinity. Roughly speaking, 8 is divided by a very large number. It will be a very small number, that is, almost 0. So this limit is equal to 0 by analogy with this one. Similarly, here this limit is equal to 0. And then we have 5 minus 0 divided by 3 plus 0, that is 5 thirds. The limit of the sequence is 5 thirds. And finally, let's take a look at some examples. Let's try to calculate these four limits. We will start with the first one. To calculate the limit as in previous cases, we will divide not by n, but by n squared, because the highest degree here is a square. If we divide by n squared, then we get the following. Dividing the numerator and denominator by n squared. 3n squared divided by n squared is just 3. Minus 5n divided by n squared is 5 divided by n, and plus 6 divided by n squared. And the same goes for the denominator. 7 minus 13 divided by n minus 18 divided by n squared. If n goes to infinity, then this is again 6 divided by an infinite number. This is 0. Similarly, 6 divided by n squared, if n is infinite, then it is again 6 divided by infinite number, which is 0. There will be 0, and there will be 0. And there will be 3 sevenths. Please note that in such examples, when we have the same degree both above and below, the same highest degree I mean, we can immediately understand what the answer will be. Just take a look at the coefficients in front of these degrees. 3 and 7, 3 sevenths. Now look at this example here. A difference from the previous one, because we have different highest degrees in the numerator and denominator. We have the third and fourth degrees here. To solve this task, we should divide by the largest degree that is less at the moment. In this case, the greatest degree is a cube, which means we should divide by a cube. Both the numerator and denominator are divided by n cubed. We get here 5 minus 4 divided by n squared plus 1 divided by n cubed. So we divide by n cubed here. That would be 2n minus 3 plus n divided by n cubed and we get 1 divided by n squared. As in the previous example, we will have this value 0. It will be 0, it will be 0, and it will be 3. And then we get 5 divided by 2n minus 3. But if n goes to infinity, then it will be 5 divided to an infinite number. It's like in the case of, for example, 5 divided by n, the same thing. 
divide 5 by an infinite number and it will be 0. So this entire limit will be equal to 0, because we have 5 divided by 2n minus 3 and the limit going to infinity is infinity. Let's take a look at this example. In the same fashion, we divide by n squared here. We will have n minus 2 divided by n plus 3 n squared on the top. It will be 1 minus 2 divided by n on the bottom. Now we should take a look at these values. It will be 0. We have now n divided by 1 or just n. The limit going to infinity from n divided by 1 will be an infinity. Limit from n with n going to infinity is infinity. Let's take a look at the last example. Despite the fact that it differs from the previous ones, it can be solved according to the same principle. We find the highest degree. In this case, we have n under the square root. This is the degree of 1 half, which means this will be the highest degree. Then we will divide both the numerator and the denominator by the square root of n. Then the limit n goes to infinity. Our denominator will be 1, so we won't write it down. We write here the square root of 3n plus 2 divided by the square root of n. We can write all under one square root. And 3n divided by n will be 3. And 2 divided by n will be displayed as 2 divided by n. Minus the square root of n. And the square root of n is 1. And the denominator, as we said before, is 1. We just don't write it here. Then we'll have a square root of 3 minus 1. It will be the limit of the sequence. Now this video lesson is over.